Hi everyone, it's Karishma here today, and today we're going to talk about quadratic equations and how you can represent them in one of three different ways. The standard form, the intercept form, and the vertex form. So let's get started. So on my screen you'll see three different equations, and these equations all represent the same parabola. And if you don't believe me, let's go ahead and plot them. So this is the plot of the first equation, here in green. And here's the plot of the second equation. And if they are the same, they'll lie on top of each other, which they do. So the blue curve lies on top of the green curve. And similarly, with the third equation over here, you'll see the light blue curve lies on top of the dark blue curve, which on, lies on top of the green curve. And so these are all different representations of the same parabola. This representation is known as the standard form, this representation is known as the intercept form, and this representation is known as the vertex form. And what I find so interesting about this, just by looking at these different um, equations, the different form, you can extract meaningful, meaningful information about the shape and behavior of the parabola. So for instance, in the standard form, which is typically, or which is, I should say, always represented by the equation ax squared plus bx plus c, a few things that you can determine are the direction of the opening. So if a is greater than 0, the parabola opens upward. If a is less than 0, the parabola faces downwards. The y-intercept, well, that can be determined by the value 0, comma c, and that y-intercept is this value, or over here. Let me zoom in so you get a better view. So that's this value. Um, the axis of symmetry, that's the line that divides the parabola into two along the vertical. Um, the axis of symmetry can be calculated by looking or, or dividing negative b over 2a. And then you can determine the vertex, which is this point over here, just by plugging in the x value into this equation. With the intercept form, which is represented by the equation a times x minus p all times x minus q. Again, you can determine the direction of opening by looking at the value of a. Um, you can't tell the y-intercept just by looking at this equation, but you can determine the x-intercepts or the zero. So those are these points over here. And they are simply the point p comma zero and q comma zero. And then that axis of symmetry, well all you have to do is um, find the midpoint between p and q and that's p plus q divided by two. Again, once you find this x value, plug it back into the equation and you can determine your vertex. And the vertex form, as its name implies, the vertex form just by looking at it tells you what the vertex is. So the vertex is the point h comma k and that axis of symmetry well that's just the x point so that's x is equal to h so now let's apply what i've just told you about each form and see if that's in fact true so let's start with the standard form the standard form of the parabola we were looking at was to have the equation 2x squared plus 4x minus 6. so the a value is 2 the b value is 4 and the c value is, over here, it's minus 6. So again, always just take a moment to look at the signs of the general form. And now we don't need the sliders, but they're not going to harm us, so I'm just going to leave them in here. And so the y-intercept is the point 0, comma c. So let's go ahead and plot that onto this graph. 0 comma c and you can plot a point by just typing in the word point and the coordinates and we can zoom in to get a better view so that in fact is the oh it's a little bit too high that's in fact the y intercept the axis of symmetry is going to be the line x equals minus b over 2a and so that's the axis of symmetry as we would hope and expect and then the vertex over here is just going to be that value of x, x is equal to minus 1, plugged into our equation. So that's minus 8, and let's in double check that this is the vertex, and it is. 
So we were able to extract the y-intercept, the axis of symmetry, and determine the vertex all by just looking at the form of this equation. We'll do the same thing for the intercept. The intercept um, form for our parabola that we were looking at had this equation over here. So the p-value is, in this case, minus 3. Take note of the sign over here. So the general form for intercept form is x minus p, so we're going to have to take the negative if we want to kind of convert this to match this form. And q is going to be positive 1 because it's already in the form x minus q, so q would be 1. So our 0 is going to be the point p comma 0, and the point q comma 0 and those are our x-intercepts and let me go ahead and zoom in. The axis of symmetry is found by determining the midpoint so that is p plus q all over 2 so that's the line x equals minus 1 that's the axis of symmetry and the vertex as before can be found by plugging in that value into the equation so you get negative 8 and we can plot that point to verify and that is our vertex so in this case we were able to determine the zeros the axis of symmetry and our vertex and let's do the same thing for the vertex form so the vertex form of our equation was as follows our parabola and h in this case is going to be negative 1. Again, always look at the general form and the sign. That's really important. So h over here is negative 1 if we want to take this and kind of convert it so it uh, follows the same form. And k will be negative 8. So our axis of symmetry over here is just the line h equal sorry x equals h and we can go and zoom in a little bit and the vertex well that's just the point h comma k and so there you have it in a subsequent video I'm gonna explain how you can actually convert from one form to another in the meantime, if you have any questions about this video, please feel free to leave them in the chat. Um, if there's any other topics that you'd like me to cover, I'd be happy to do that. Just let me know. Once again, this is Karishma, and thank you for tuning in.